Man, what's up, folks? What's up, folks? What it do? This is your boy, Roy, and this is the Preaching to the Birds podcast. We really like to have you like and subscribe. But before we get into all of that, before we get into all that, let's talk about what is really, really important. The Eagles won a football game. Yeah, it was sloppy. Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, we wanted to see better from Shonda's side. Yeah, we wanted to see better from Brian Johnson. But a win is a win. And I don't give anyone says, guess what it looks like on our on our uh on our record. 1-0, baby. You know what that means? We tied with the Cowboys, even though they look much better, and I gotta admit, they look much better than I expected them to look. They blew out the doors. The doors. They blew the house off the Giants. They ain't even got no home to live. They got the Giants out here looking homeless. And right now they look so bad in the goddamn game. But anyways, we got some talk, some some stuff to talk about. But let's just be happy for the win. This is the preaching the birds podcast, and I gotta talk about some great shit. I think the Eagles literally, quite literally. have a dynamic duo named Jalen Carter and our guy Jordan Davis, who is going to take over the league. Maybe not this year, but but more than likely next year, baby. It's a change in the guard. We got the new Jerome Brown and the new up Reggie White. Let's go. Preach the Bread Podcast. Let's get into the, the what happened in the game, why it happened, and all that good stuff. Sheesh. So before we get into all that crazy stuff about Jordan Davis and how I think Jalen Carter is an absolute stud, we got to talk about the game. We got to talk about Sean Desai and how Brian Johnson, both our new OCs, kind of wet the bed, right? So Sean Desai didn't show me what I thought he was going to show me, right? I thought my man was going to come out, show me the mean side of the city. He was going to show the personality of the nitty gritty, the ugh, that nasty side of the city, you know, the, 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 you stepped on my shoes side of the city. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't happen. I didn't see none of that. Maybe y'all saw I didn't see it. We did get a takeaway, though. We got a pick six. Shout out to Darius Slay. I wish he had gotten another pick. That was a huge momentum play. And if he had made that other pick where he twirled around and shit, and, uh, then they would have probably had a different outcome in the game. And the game wouldn't have been so close. But that's beside the point. We won the game. But Sean decided in my opinion, had a bad game. We could not figure out a way to get Mac Jones out of momentum. That offensive out of, you know, their their, their, their extra ways of calling the game. To me, it looked like an old school type of Bill Belichick run team in the sense of they do short passes and they do extra shit you're not really concerned of to win the game, right? Ramondre Steven didn't have a great rushing total, but he had a lot of passing yards. Not what we expected. We understand it's Bill Belichick. He does that type of shit, right? Also, we got to talk about Brian Johnson. You know, because Sean Desai, he just, he just didn't do what he was supposed to do. We understand. Brian Johnson also didn't do what he was supposed to do. Brian Johnson only gave our guy DeAndre Swift two carries like, two carries bro like huh like huh Nick Sirianni had to go up on the podium and talk about it he don't know how it happened I don't know how it happened Brian Johnson probably know how it happened it is what it is for whatever reason the run game went away I don't know why the run game went away we needed the run game the whole game not just the first quarter but after the first quarter, the run game was non-existent. Eventually, Ryan Johnson got the passing game involved. But where was Dallas Goddard? 
We needed Dallas for whatever reason. He was absent. Quez, absent. Quez Watkins was also absent in the game. We needed both those players, in my humble opinion. Hopefully, next game, we can find a way to get them involved with, you know, scouting and self-scouting of that nature. You get it. We need a lot more. But while we're talking about Brian Johnson, we got to talk about Rashad Penny. This would have been a good game to get Rashad Penny involved, in my opinion. As we've already discussed, as we've already discussed, the Patriots D line is a horrific front. And I mean, like, in the sense of a good way. These people are monsters. Josh Uche, Keon White, Matthew Judon. They're going to be a force to reckon with with the league for the foreseeable future. It's going to be a great, great season for the Patriots defense, in my opinion. So, you know, if we look kind of bad, don't feel too bad about it, Eagles fans. I think that defense is for real. But still, I think Brian Johnson could have called a better game. Running the ball with the quarterback in the in the fourth quarter isn't is in my in my opinion a great decision. And Jalen Hurts can't cough up the ball. He was open in the moment. I was like thinking like, bro, bro, I need you to slide, bro, please, please. And he didn't slide and got hit by you know Marcus Jones. I already said it in the last video. So I'm not gonna redo that. But it, it was it was sad. It was sad. Because we gave up the ball in the fourth quarter. For, fortunately, though, Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis stepped up when Fletcher Cox <clears throat> went down with that injury. Hopefully, Fletcher Cox can come back, by the way. But most importantly, we get to talk about what really matters and why you're here for the video. So Jordan Davis and our guy Jalen Carter are absolute monsters, man. They're absolute monsters. In my humble opinion, I think these guys are the second coming of Reggie White. And, and Jerome Brown. These people literally, literally, in my opinion, can no longer be single blocked by most players. Jalen Carter, first play of the game, beats a guard, gets a hurry. Crazy. First play that he ever played in a game, he got a hurry against the quarterback. Jalen Carter finished the game with six hurries, one sack, one tackle for loss, an amazing game for a player that just started playing in the NFL. Not alone, been playing for 10 years. It's crazy what we got. I'm very thankful that we got Jalen Carter. But we got to talk about Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis also had a good game. He had about five tackles. He had a forced fumble, .5 sacks. He's looking like he can no longer be single blocked in run games. He can't be blocked. He might not even be single block now in the pass game. He's putting in a lot more effort. I'm loving what I am seeing from Jordan Davis. If he can continue to develop, put a little more meat on them bones, boy, he gonna be some serious, some crazy. And I can't wait to personally see it. I think realistically speaking, the NFL fucked up. And as sure as sugar is sweet, I think every NFL GM that passed on Jalen Carter, that passed on Jordan Davis to allow Howie Roseman to somehow collect Nicobe Dean, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Nolan Smith, all on the same team. What? Huh? We we're very thankful, and as sure as sugar is sweet, we are going to terrorize the league. The league. For, you know, at least the next three or four years, because these people are under contract. They're first round picks. That means we got an option on these niggas. <laughs> it's like, what? 
Come on now. We living in great times to be a Phil. It's a great time to be a Philadelphia Eagles fan. You know I'm saying some hot shit because the fly is bothering me. It is time to be divine. It's we the guys are with us. I just hope, I pray that with this Nicobe Dean injury that, you know, somebody steps up. Uh, Christian Ellis, uh, uh, Randall Cunningham turns into a super saiyan. He gets green hair or 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 turns blonde. I don't care. I just need someone that's a linebacker to step up because Nicobe Dean was playing really well and I need a beast to return. And I need a beast to be waiting for him in that return. You know what I mean? I need two beasts because we have two beasts at linebacker. I'm telling you, we're going to be better. Than the last year we had. We're going to have a better team the last year. We have a better team than the 22-22 team this season. That's, it's, it's a wrap. This 23-24 season is going to be way better. If we can get two stud linebackers in there. I see Reed Blankenship looking cool. You already see it. If he can stay healthy. Sydney Brown coming. It's great to be an Eagles fan. Vikings are up next. Vikings are up next. I'm going to come with, with a video. About that were the keys to the game or the keys to the victory of the game against the Vikings on Thursday. It will be a hard fought battle. The Vikings are 0 1, but I think we can get him. Kirk Cousins is in the habit of shitting the bed in Thursday night games or just big games in general. I hope he continues that trend with the Eagles. Well, with that being said, I hope you're all having a great day. I'm obviously in a fantastic mood. I see the future uh, uh, looking bright, and I'm just thankful. I'm just very thankful for a man named Howard Grossman. I hope you guys are too. Peace out.